Your life is the result of your habits. Actions that you repeat daily, normally in the same order and almost always in the same way. From brushing your teeth to walking your dog to the way you drive to work, almost everything you do is a habit even the way you sit at your desk, even the way you tie your shoes and the way you do the dishes. Your life is a result of your actions. The things that you do that create a certain result, whether that was a conscious thing you did for a conscious result or whether it was something you did not mean to do for a result that you did not mean to get. And since habits are actions that you repeat to create a certain result daily, your life is largely the result of your habits. But the problem is the majority of your habits and for a lot of people, all of their habits are mindlessly chosen by their impulses, society and whoever raised them. Which if you look around isn't a good thing. If you have the same habits as everybody else, you will get the same results as everybody else and you will live the same life as everybody else. A life of mindless distraction poor health, no confidence, living for the weekend and barely making ends meet. But the silver lining here is that most of your habits, the way you tie your shoes, the way you brush your teeth are harmless. They're not going to ruin your life. But that doesn't mean habits themselves are harmless. You could have some massively detrimental habits from drinking every weekend or every night to taking drugs to eat at McDonald's for every single lunch to spending your life glued to the screen you're likely watching this on now. If you're not careful, these habits, which the majority of people have, will ruin your life. Not overnight, no. Slowly, over time, chipping away at your mood, your health and your will to live until eventually you're on your deathbed full of regrets. This is how people end up in ruts. They repeat the constant cycle of mindless habits that don't push them forward but instead hold them back. And with each day they perform the habits, they sink deeper and deeper into the rut and they know it. It might not be readily available at the top of their mind but deep down they know that this is the problem. They're not living a life that is conducive to where they want to go, what they want to achieve and becoming all they could be. But there's another silver lining here. You can massively change your life and get out of a rut by building just free habits. If you build the right habits simply by doing them, you rewire your identity to someone who does these habits and therefore you have the identity of someone who doesn't do the habits that were originally holding you back. You need free habits. You can't just build any free habits and expect them to change your life. No, these habits must be conducive to all humans. The underlying purpose of these habits must be so hardwired into us that the impact on our psyche, our identity is life changing. But at the same time, because they are so hardwired into us as a species, we are naturally drawn to building them. We're naturally pulled by them and you find them easy to build. You'll want to build them. You'll want to live in accordance with the identity that they give you. What could those habits possibly be? Do habits that powerful even exist? Well, they do because think about when you were a child, when you were most true to yourself and your actions and habits were least influenced by the outside world. You always did free things. You practiced. Whether it was walking, drawing, talking or anything else, you practiced. You would try something every single day, chasing progress until you mastered it. You asked why. Kids are notorious for this. It can be quite frustrating because all they do is ask why. Why this? Why that? Why this? Kids are always asking why to everything, always pursuing the meaning behind everything. You followed what grabbed you. Whether it was dinosaurs, wild animals, cars or whatever else, once something grabbed you, as a child you followed it. You went deep into its world, consumed everything about it, books, movies, TV shows, toys. You followed your curiosities and you did it shamelessly. With that, the free habits that you need to build, not just to get out of a rut, get your life together and make progress, but because you are a human being are these. One that builds mastery. You've been drawn to chasing mastery your whole entire life from when you were a kid trying to master the art and skill of walking to the latest skill you've tried to build. Most people are pretty adept at chasing mastery and trying new things when they're young, when they're going through school, when they're in high school, trying to learn new things, learning the guitar, learning a sport. But the problem is most people stop trying to master something once they finish school or university. And the result of leaving this habit out of your life is that it creates a massive gap in your identity and takes away a crucial part of being a human. You have to strive for mastery in at least one thing. I do not care what it is. If you're a software engineer, chase mastery of coding. If you are a writer, chase mastery of writing. If you're an athlete, chase mastery of your sport. Or it's up to you. You can decide to change your entire life and chase mastery of something new. Whatever you do, if you want to live a life that you love, a life of fulfillment and progress, you need to be chasing mastery of something. You need to be in the pursuit of progress and meaning through mastery. Now I go over how to master yourself, your craft and your performance in my course Mastery OS 
I will put a link to that in the description below so if you're interested go check that out. But as for what the habit of chasing mastery looks like it is entirely context dependent to you and the habit. The main thing is that you practice it daily and you learn about it daily which is where my 2 hour mastery formula comes in useful. Every day what you need to do is spend 1 hour practicing the act of your craft taking action and one hour learning about your craft learning the theory behind it now how this looks will again differ massively depending on what you're trying to master and how much time you can give to mastering it each day because if you can give more than two hours to mastering it then do that spend more than one hour each day taking action if you can't don't worry give as much time as you can the main thing is that you dedicate specific time each day to the pursuit of progress and the pursuit of mastery in your chosen craft it's what you're meant to do. One that incites meaning. What is life without meaning? It is literally pointless. Without meaning, there is no point. There is no responsibility. There's no risk. There's no adventure to life and life becomes boring. Now, obviously that seems quite nihilistic, but it's actually not. Because at any moment you can decide to take all meaning, take on responsibility and risk and make every single second of your life meaningful. You just need a habit that will incite meaning in your life. Now if you're on my newsletter you will have seen a past email from a few weeks ago that I sent out called the meaning of life and you'll know that I believe the meaning of life to be the pursuit of becoming all you can be. I will leave a link to that newsletter in the description below if you want to find out why but with that there are two parts. Chasing progress and your potential in every area of life which of course has multiple subparts and making an impact and leaving your mark. So a habit that incites meaning should do one of those two things. It should be helping you chase your potential. This could be the likes of working out. Or it should be helping you make an impact and leave your mark. This could be the likes of creating content. Now with this, because you have two main parts of chasing your potential in multiple areas of life, in every area, and the part of making an impact and leaving your mark, you should have multiple habits in your life that incite meaning. For example, creating content and working out, the two I just mentioned they are fantastic starting points. The gym will teach you more about yourself, delayed gratification, discipline and consistency than almost anything else. And creating content will give you the leverage to impact millions of people given the right amount of time, knowledge and tools as well as the opportunity to live life on your terms. Now if you're unsure of where to start with creating content you can check out a past video of mine on becoming a digital millionaire that'll be in the corner up here somewhere. Regardless you need a habit that incites responsibility and risk and therefore meaning. And there's no greater responsibility nor no goal more meaningful than the pursuit of becoming all you could be. One that pursues curiosity. Humans are innately curious. It's why we've gone from riding around the towns and cities on horse and cart to electric cars that can go from 0 to 60 miles per hour in less than 2 seconds. A life without curiosity is boring. It's mundane with no spice. But like I said, you are innately curious. You just have to learn how to listen to your curiosities and lean into what grabs you shamelessly like you did when you were a child. Me, for example, I'm a sucker for philosophy, videography, photography, performance, mastery, conspiracy theories and animals. I will spend at least one hour every single day pursuing my curiosities, leaning into and learning one of these topics. I don't curate it. I don't force it. I will just follow what grabs me, following my curiosities, noting down facts, ideas, questions, my thoughts and how I could apply them to my life. This keeps my life interesting. I'm learning and therefore expanding my knowledge base in an exciting way. I'm learning about things that will benefit my life and therefore because I create content with the goal of making an impact, impact other people's life. But most importantly, I'm building out projects related to all of these curiosities. Obviously, except conspiracy theories and animals, they're just sort of guilty pleasures. I don't build anything out around them. But the other areas, philosophy, mastery, photography, I am able to implement what I learn, share what I experience, provide value to the world and make a mark, helping me find meaning through the pursuit of becoming all I could be through chasing my potential in certain areas and making an impact. Now that's me, I am curious, but you are curious as well. You just have to learn to listen to what you're curious about, follow it without question and dive deep. Whatever it is that grabs you, dedicate specific time each day to following it and dedicate specific time each day to building out a project related to it. You see, without the act of building the project, you're wasting knowledge. You're limiting your learning capacity as you will learn so much more about yourself and the curiosity that you're chasing through the action and experience of building than you will just consuming information. You are innately curious about something and when you're innately curious about something the amount of value you can provide around it is insane. 
It's another reason I'm a massive fan of the creator business model because it actually incentivizes you and entices you to share what you learn as you explore your curiosities. So again, follow what grabs you and build something around it. Let yourself pivot as you want to pivot and keep going because all you need to get out of a rut and change your life is free habits. One that builds mastery, one that incites meaning and one that pursues curiosity. My friend, as always, thank you for watching. That is it for this video. Make sure you check out this video here, click that subscribe button and I will see you in the next one.